Hey everybody, it's Miss Peachy from your WCA Physical Science class, and I am recording this tutorial to kind of go over um, alpha and beta decay with you. It is going to be as a recording because um, I did not unfortunately make a recording of, of today's lesson, so I want to make sure that you have the basic information that you need to be able to do these problems. Um, so we're going to do some practice problems with this. I'm going to explain a little bit about you know what's going on with this nuclear reactions. So in our last unit we did chemical reactions and chemical reactions remember are involving um, electrons in the valence shell, so the outer shell of those atoms. And those electrons are either being donated and accepted in ionic bonding or with covalent bonding, they're actually being shared um, between or among different um, atoms. And so what's happening in a chemical reaction is that bonds are being broken, new bonds are being formed, but the number of atoms on both sides of the reaction, or the number of atoms before and after the reaction take place are the same, they're just being rearranged in different ways. What we said about chemical reactions before is that they do not involve the protons and neutrons in the nucleus. They just involve those outside valence electrons. And those are loosely bonded, or loosely bound to the atom, I should say. So they're more easily removed. You can rub your hands together and rub off electrons. You can rub a balloon against your hair and rub off electrons, and that's what you're doing when you're creating like the charge that allows that balloon to stick to the wall. Um, protons and neutrons, however, are very tightly bound to the nucleus of an atom. And protons and neutrons, um, it's very difficult or requires a lot of energy for them to be able to be removed. So in the process of a nuclear reaction, what's occurring is a spontaneous decay of that nucleus. So the number of protons and neutrons is changing, but because it is such a um, tightly bound entity, when nuclear reactions occur, when, when radioactive decay occurs, energy is going to be released in the form of high energy gamma radiation. So they're very energetic and, and if you're exposed to a lot of that gamma radiation, it can be exceptionally harmful to, to living things, living cells. So we're going to talk about two different types of decay. I'm talking about alpha and beta decay. And we're going to explain, or I'm going to explain to you, how um, what's happening to the nucleus of the atom for each one of those, and how would you determine what your product is going to be? Because we still have our, you know, parent element on one side of the nuclear reaction, and you still have a products on the other side. So it's similar in the structure of how we we um, actually lay out those formulas, those nuclear reaction formulas are going to be similar to the chemical reaction formulas. All right, so that's enough of me. I'm going to turn my attention, turn your attention, excuse me, to my notebook and periodic table. We're going to go ahead and um, I'm just going to flip my um, camera down, make it bigger for you. Okay, so now you can see my notebook and we're going to go through a few examples. So we have um, alpha and beta decay. And alpha decay releases what's called an alpha particle. And an alpha particle is written as the Greek letter alpha. And an alpha particle is essentially um, composed of two neutrons, or excuse me, two protons, I did this, and two neutrons. So the number on the bottom I'm going to put is the number of protons. The number on top is going to be a mass number. A mass number is, is the number of protons plus neutrons. So here we have number of new, uh, protons, excuse me, and then this is the mass number. protons plus neutrons. So an alpha particle that has four and two, if you look at that, um, there is one element on the periodic table that has a atomic number of two and a mass number of roughly four, and that's helium. 
So uh, an alpha particle is essentially a helium atom, is what it is. So when something undergoes alpha decay, it's actually releasing a helium atom plus some gamma radiation. And this is our symbol for gamma radiation right here. I'm just going to put that in parentheses that it's gamma rays. So lots of energy, although a lot less in here. This is the least um, penetrating of all different kinds of uh, nuclear reactions. But it's giving off four protons, or excuse me, four subatomic particles, two protons, two neutrons, and a total of two protons. So if I'm going to give you an example of some something undergoing alpha decay, let's start with an element called radon. Or I'm sorry, this is actually, um, yeah, this is radon. Radon 220. And radon has an atomic number of 86. Okay, so that's what we start with. This is called our parent element. If it undergoes alpha decay, it's going to release a helium atom. And it's going to become a different element altogether because this bottom number is going to change by two. It's actually getting rid of two protons. So my bottom number is actually going to be 86 minus two or 84. Now the atomic number tells us which element we're looking at. So if I start with this right here, if I start with radon number 86 and I go down to I end up with the element polonium which has an atomic number of 84 so this actually becomes polonium 84 okay the top number so a total number of subatomic particles four two protons two neutrons are going away as well so I'm going to take that 220 and I'm going to subtract 4 and end up with 216. So my daughter element right here, our daughter isotope, it's going to be polonium 216. So we can call this polonium 216. That's another way of saying it. Okay. But this, this is the way we write it. This is the nomenclature. That's how we write it. So that is alpha decay. Alpha decay. Alpha decay will always decrease the bottom number or decrease the atomic number by 2 and decrease the mass number by 4. And so because we're decreasing that bottom number, you have to look at your periodic table and go back to elements. Beta decay is more energetic, and we write beta decay with the Greek letter beta. Oops, let's get this. There we go. I'll lock this in here. What's happening with beta decay is it's actually releasing a beta particle, which is the same as an electron. It has an atomic mass of zero. And it only has a negative one charge at the bottom. So it's not, it doesn't have any protons, no neutrons, just negative one. What's happening with a beta decay is a little bit quirky. What actually happens here is one of the, we have our parent element. One of the neutrons changes to a proton. And you release 
one electron. So that's what's happening with our beta decay. So what's happening here, if I come up with an example of beta decay, say we start with what we um, had before. We start with polonium-216. Polonium-216 will undergo beta decay. So we have a neutron that changes to a proton. So our protons at the bottom, that's the number 84, is going to go up by one because a neutron is changing to a proton. And if I go on my periodic table, that means I'm going to go from polonium, 84, to astatine, which is 85. So this becomes astatine. Okay? Now this is the trickier part because a neutron is changing to a proton. We still have the same number on top. You subtract a neutron, which would make that 215, but then you add a proton, which makes it back to 216. Does that make sense? You're subtracting a neutron because you're um, changing a neutron, but then you're adding a proton. So the number on top stays the same. So then your daughter is astatine. Two sixteen. Okay, so that's the difference between alpha decay and beta decay, and those are the two types of radioactive decay you're going to need to know for this um, unit. Remember that both of them are releasing different amounts of gamma radiation. Beta decay is a deeper penetrating kind of um, reaction, so it's actually releasing more energy than alpha decay is. And so those are the two that we're going to talk about in this unit. So if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to give me a call at extension 2204, or you may send me a webmail message. Have a great day, everybody.